Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of Get Good at OpenRST2. In this video I'm going to show you how to make a swing ride uh, similar to this one. Now I'm not going to uh, recreate this exact ride. Um, this example was made by Old School in his timeline park. But I will show you how to make something that uh, kind of looks like this. There's many ways to do a tower and a top for this ride. Um, yeah, there's just uh, a lot you can do to uh, make these rides uh, look nice. And it's actually quite simple to do if you understand some basic uh, shoestringing. Anyway, let's go to my test map and uh, make one of these rides. Alright, to uh, start off this ride, well, you'll probably want some sort of uh, platform. Um, yeah, for now I'll just put down some wooden coasted track. But uh, you can uh, really uh, do this uh, however you like. So, yeah, I'll just uh, make it an interesting color. I don't know. The color is not too important here. And um, I also make a little platform on top with car ride track. So I'll use the allow building track at invalid height sheet. And I'll disable clearance checks. And that allows us to build this car ride track uh, just above the wooden coaster track. Uh, once again, how you do this platform, or even if you want to have a platform, um, that's really up to you. Um, this is just a little example. Now, um, yeah, you can do a circular uh, um, uh, pole in the middle or a support in the middle, however you like. You could, for example, uh, use these uh, circular pieces, or you could use colorful ones, or you could even uh, stack um, pieces of track, like, uh, uh, for example, uh, Virginia real track. You could uh, stack several of these on top of each other, like uh, so, for example. Well, you'll, you'll probably need to hide the uh, supports. Right, this is uh, one thing you could do. Um, one thing that I often see people do nowadays though is uh, that they actually use a spiral slide. You could also sh see that in the example from uh, old school that I showed earlier. So um, here we have the spiral slide. I'm not going to give it an entrance or an exit. And it actually has quite a nice color pattern on it. So let's uh, invert it. Doesn't really matter, it really depends on uh, what colors you like. And uh, now it has a tile pattern, a checkerboard tile pattern under it. Uh, in Open RST2, um, you can actually, um, if you go to the object selection and then go to entrance tiles, if you set the filter to Open RST2 official, you actually also see uh, uh, no entrance, no platform as an uh, entrance tile. And if you do that, then the spiral slide will actually uh, no longer, um, yeah show the checkerboard pattern under it and then for example you could give it a, a different uh, floor pattern if you uh, if you want I'll just go with uh, red here so I'll just put some blocks under it again this is really up to you maybe you like the um, checkerboard pattern you can also use that if you don't you can give it your own uh, style now um, as for the top um, really also uh, up to uh, what you prefer. Something I really like is to use the side friction roller coaster. Um, let's start over here. Um, we'll need to decide on a height for it. I think I'll maybe a little bit taller. Right, this is uh, really up to your uh, preference uh, how tall you want it to be. I think this is a nice height. Um, I think I'll go with yellow here. And uh, I want to hide these uh, supports, the wooden supports that show up. So I hold control, select this track piece. I well, probably easiest is to just, uh, uh, on this tile, just move the surface uh, up above all the other pieces. And that will make all the supports on this tile uh, uh, disappear. If your swing ride is above water, um, never um, hide the supports uh, this way, because then uh, your track will get really glitchy. So you probably don't uh, don't want that. 
Okay, um, yeah, um, this is a way that I like to make a roof for it. Um, you could then uh, top it off with some uh, some of this track. Uh, why then maybe the roof needs to be a little bit higher. Um, but yeah, yeah, there's a lot you can do uh, to make a nice looking roof. Um, there's a lot you could uh, add on top of here. Now one uh, trick that uh, I sometimes see people do is uh, to put an enterprise on top. So either the firecracker ride from the expansions or the normal enterprise. Here I'll just use the uh, uh, normal enterprise, but both of these uh, work. So um, I'll just put it uh, so that it's right on top of the um, side friction coaster track. Now it's uh, already set to uh, no entrance, no platform, so that's good. Now we'll probably want to hide these uh, supports once again. Right, just going to make sure that this ride actually has an entrance and an exit. All right, um, for the next trick that uh, I want to do, um, we'll need to have uh, the debug tools enabled. So if you go to options and you go to this wrench icon here, you can see enable debugging tools. If that is on, then you can actually force a breakdown on a ride. So uh, just going to uh, test the ride. I go to the screen, I hold my mouse button over this, and when the vehicles are horizontal like this, then I force a breakdown on the ride for a safety cutout. You can see the ride is now uh, broken down, and now these vehicles are swung outwards. And I think that makes uh, for a really cool looking roof. Now, the problem when you do this is that you will always um, keep a mechanic uh, busy. So if I place down a mechanic one, um, he will then uh, try to go to uh, to this ride to fix it. So yeah, that's uh, just something you'll ha have to uh, keep in mind. Um, what you could do is uh, actually go in the beep editor, or uh, you could move the mechanic somewhere. You could freeze him in place, and uh, yeah, then um, he will. Uh, yeah, I pa I paused his uh, movement now. So uh, he should just stay, stay uh, in the state, uh, responding to Enterprise 1 uh, breakdown uh, forever. So you could, for example, just uh, move him under uh, the ride here if you want, or move him somewhere out of the way, uh, I don't know. If you keep him like this, uh, um, yeah, no other mechanic should actually uh, go ahead and try to fix uh, this ride. Now when you do this, uh, you will sometimes get messages that uh, the ride is still broken down and that uh, it still hasn't been fixed. So uh, yeah, that uh, can be a little bit uh, annoying. But I think uh, <laughs> the, yeah, being uh, able to make a roof like this uh, is actually worth it. All right, uh, here you can actually see the message still hasn't been fixed, blah blah blah. So you will uh, keep getting these uh, messages, uh, sadly. Now one thing you could uh, actually do is, for example, call them ride. Swing ride operator. And I'll just uh, make him look like an operator. So uh, I have the mechanic selected here. I can actually give him a, a uniform. I'll put him a little bit higher. And then uh, I'll just put them under the right here. All right, now he's the ride operator. <laughs> just something you can do. Uh, anyway, um, now it's now that we've done this, it's time to actually make the ride uh, functional. So, um, in order to do that, uh, I'll first make a station over here. I'll make a control track underground and I'll make a track where the ride will end up uh, swinging. And one thing you'll have to take into account is that this is uh, the vehicles that we're going to use are normally used under a suspended coaster. So um, yeah, you'll you'll see later um, what that uh, what that entails. Anyway, first just going to make the station for this ride. I'll just use the Steel wild mouse track. I'll make a, a 
track behind this ride where we can spawn the vehicles. I'll make this track go underground where we will have uh, a control track. I will um, hide this path. Right, um, exactly under this uh, station, I will make uh, the station for the control track. And I'm going to make sure that it's exactly at the same height as the original track. By the way, I always recommend to turn off this uh, allow building track at invalid heights uh, um, when, uh, whenever you no longer uh, need it. Because it can be annoying uh, to actually connect paths to uh, entrances and exits that have been built at an invalid height. Anyway, um, under this existing station, I'll make a new uh, station, a new ride actually, and I like to use uh, um, the wooden wild mouse track to make a control track, uh, just because it's a different ride type and it makes it easier to uh, distinguish between uh, these two. Anyway, um, for the underground track, we'll want to have chain lifts on all track pieces. So let's enable that. Over here, right next to the station, um, the two tracks will be merged. And now I will just make a track over here, control track. Uh, the track will ha have a chain lift on all of the track pieces. And the longer you make this uh, um, track, the longer the duration of the ride will be. Now, for this underground track, you don't actually have to place an entrance or an exit. Um, you only need to have this track and or this uh, station, the, these station pieces and the track which has a chain lift uh, throughout. Now um, we have to make sure for this track um, that the merge here is done correctly. So I will uh, just use the cutaway view because it makes things easier. So just just uh, lowering the cutaway height over here. Okay, now we have a good view of what's happening on the ground with the tile inspector. When I hold control, select this track here. And what we want is the for the wooden wild mouse, the control track, we want that to be the lowest piece on this tile. So let's see. Uh, right now, uh, I have selected this tile over here. We want the um, train to go to the wooden wild mouse track. So the wooden wild mouse track here needs to be on the bottom. Now, the steel wild mouse track is actually on the bottom. So I'm going to move it above the wooden wild mouse track. Now the wooden wild mouse track is here at the bottom. So whenever a vehicle arrives here, it will go to the wooden wild, wooden wild mouse track here on this merge. All right, and now um, up here, we'll need a track for our vehicles to go to. So I will make that um, now. Uh, you can use any uh, track type here. Uh, I will now just use uh, a looping coaster track. And I believe uh, when you put the trains on this track, they will actually go under uh, where the actual track is now. So uh, you'll have to keep that in mind. So m you may want to place the track a little bit higher or uh, lower. I think uh, uh, having it he here somewhat in the middle or a little bit above um, the middle in between the platform and the roof is probably a good height for this ride. Now on this uh, uh, looping coaster track I'll make a straight piece over here and that will be the part where, um, the, where, we, will, where we will merge these two tracks. So now we have to go from this uh, wild mouse track to this looping coaster track. So I will remove this uh, piece temporarily that leads downwards and over here. I will go upwards and I'll make a track that goes to this track. And I'll put chain lift on it uh, so the trains will actually make it to here. All right, and over here, the two tracks will be merged. Okay, I will go in the tile inspector here just to make sure that this merge is done correctly. So on this uh, uh, particular tile, I'll I want the vehicles to go to the looping coaster track. So um, 
yeah, over here we have three track pieces on this uh, um, particular, on this height, on this uh, position. There's uh, two pieces of r looping roller coaster track. Um, this is track piece ID 43, that's a curved piece. This is track piece ID 0, which is a straight piece. And if you want to make sure, you can actually move it up a bit, and then you can see that the straight track piece of the looping coaster track is actually the track piece that's moving up here. Now, it's below the Steel Wild Mouse track, so when a tr train arrives here, it will actually go to the looping roller coaster track and continue there. All right, um, I will rebuild this piece that I deleted earlier that leads to the control track. So um, what we'll want to do here is, um, well, first this, uh, uh, this wild mouse track needs an entrance and an exit. So this is also where the guests will uh, enter the ride. Uh, I will hide the entrance and exit for now, just so it's easier to see what's going on here. Now, um, for this wild mouse, um, yeah, we, we'll have to select the vehicles that we want to use. Um, I'll, in the cheats, I'll select um, show all operating modes, unlock operating limits. I'll do allow arbitrary ride type changes, show vehicles from other track types, and disable vehicle limits. Quite a lot of cheats, but uh, we will need uh, all of them at some point. Now, I'm um, over here on this station for the Steel Wild Mouse. Um, let me uh, change the scaling a bit so I can uh, actually select the vehicle that I want to use. Uh, we'll want some kind of uh, um, suspended vehicle. Alright, the vehicle I've chosen is the Swinging Cars. Um, yeah, there's more uh, cars that you can use, but uh, this is the one that uh, I like to use. And this ride is easiest to do um, if you take a number of cars that's divisible by four. So then it's easier to divide them over the track and space them out. I'll go with uh, 13 cars per train um, because 12 is divisible by four. And then you'll have one car extra that will be on the underground uh, control track. So yeah. I probably uh, didn't word that correctly. You'll want uh, a number that's divisible by four plus one. All right, what I'm going to do now is uh, open the ride. I will wait for the first vehicle to be on its way down here. Then I'll pause the game. And then in Town Inspector, I'll switch the order of these two track pieces. So the rest of the train continues here on this track. So the first vehicle will be underground on the control track and the rest of the train will be above ground on this uh, looping coaster track. We'll need to change the operating mode because uh, it now that it doesn't have a continuous circuit. So for that I'll just do a powered launch without passing station. Alright, time to open the ride. Alright, the first vehicle is now on its way downward. I may have waited a little bit too long before pausing the game. Um, in that case, I'll have to uh, do this again, but uh, I'll try. Um, so for this uh, um, particular tile, I'll now switch the order uh, between the track that leads downwards and the one that leads upwards. All right, um, this is the track piece that leads uh, downwards. Then we have the surface, and then we have the piece that leads upwards. The piece that leads downwards, I'll move it above the track piece that leads upwards, and then the rest of the train should continue above ground. And apparently I messed that up. So uh, let's try again. I probably didn't have the correct pieces. Right, um, as you may be able to see now, um, vehicle one is now on the underground track and the rest of the train will continue on the upper track. So uh, as soon as the first vehicle uh, passed, I switched the order of these two track pieces. 
And that's also what you should do. And if it doesn't work the first time, um, yeah, just check what you did wrong and try it again. All right, um, I put chain lift and all these track pieces. Um, so here you can set the lift hill chain speed to uh, set a speed that you like. Uh, alternatively, um, you can also change this vehicle into a powered vehicle with the right vehicle editor. And then um, you can actually set the speed uh, through the right vehicle editor that you want. But for now, I'll just show the method that uses the lift hill chain speed. Anyway, um, I'm going to wait for this vehicle to reach the station. I'll just close the ride so the ride stops whenever it uh, reaches it. And when that's done, I will uh, start spacing out these vehicles. I want to divide them evenly over this track. Okay, the ride has now stopped. And now I'll start dividing these uh, trains over this uh, looping coaster track. I'll already start making uh, some of these tracks uh, invisible. Just so it's uh, easier to see what I'm doing. So for this uh, uh, steel wild mouse track, the main ride, I'll just call it a swing ride. I'll change it into a lift. That way the track becomes invisible and it changes it into a transport ride. So guests will ride this ride whenever they arrive at the station, as long as the ride is free. and. Uh, because it's a transport ride, they will actually not look at the stats of the ride, so that might be uh, handy. Anyway, um, just going to uh, move these vehicles uh, around evenly throughout the track. At least uh, I'll make an attempt. So if you don't know how to do this, um, uh, you can use the Ride Vehicle Editor plugin for this. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description where you can get it. Um, you simply select this swing ride. The vehicles are now on the track. I paused the game. Uh, vehicle 1 is the one that's underground, but vehicle 2 is over here. And I will just, uh, here under track progress, uh, move the vehicles to the spots where I want them. We have uh, 12 vehicles here on this track. So that means in every uh, quarter we will have 3 vehicles. Alright, the vehicles are now spaced evenly throughout the track. So now I'll just um, change this looping roller coaster into a crooked house. Or you could also change it into another ride type like the lift. And now all these, uh, yeah, this looping coaster track is invisible. And now all these uh, um, vehicles look like they're suspended under this uh, structure. So I'll just. Uh, Oh, that's the wrong route. I'll just select this swing ride and I'll put it in test mode once again. And there we have it. Our swing ride is now uh, mostly completed. Now, um, I still want to connect uh, the entrance and exit to the ride. So let's make those uh, visible. Now, I think uh, it will actually look nicer if the Q actually connects directly to this uh, platform. So for that, I'll once again go in the tile inspector. I'll select this uh, this exit. I'll copy it and I paste it to this tile. Um, this exit I'll delete, and this exit I'll press the make usable button. And I'll do the same for this entrance. I'll copy and paste it to this tile. I'll de delete the existing one, and for this one I'll press make usable. And then I'll quickly make a queue around the right. Alright, so now I'll make the entrance one invisible once again. Maybe we'll want a little um, gate over here. You may also want uh, a little operator hut somewhere. For uh, operator huts, uh, I like to use uh, cookie shops, and this may actually not be the right uh, position. 
might be best to uh, place it uh, somewhere over here or maybe over here. Um, yeah, for this example, I think we can do without uh, operator head. Maybe you could place it over here. Operator head. Just make sure to close this shop so you don't confuse guests who want to buy a cookie. <laughs> I said uh, for this example we can do without the operator art, but I place it anyway. Okay, um, now the ride should be finished. Let me quickly check if the ride generates uh, stats. It doesn't look like the ride actually calculates uh, stats. That's uh, something that can uh, sometimes happen during uh, shoe stringing. So, um, yeah, if a ride doesn't generate any stats, only 10% of, of the guests who actually arrive at the queue uh, will enter the ride. So, um, yeah, in order to prevent that, um, we'll need to do something. So, I will just uh, pause the game for a second. Now, this uh, ride over here, it's a lift, so the track is invisible. Let's change it back to a uh, steel wild mouse. Um, now, what happened? Uh, the ride doesn't generate any stats. And that will also block stat calculation for any other ride you build in the park from now. So... Yeah, that's something you'll probably want to solve. And the best way to solve that is uh, yeah, what we see here is the track leading from the station to this infinite loop of looping coaster track that I built here earlier. And the stat calculation function is actually stuck in that infinite loop. So in order to solve that, I will just take one of these track pieces that leads to that infinite loop. I will move it out of the way so that this track is no longer connected. Um, then I will close this uh, swing ride once. What that does is uh, it will actually stop the stat calculation function. It releases it. And if I put it in test mode once again, now it will restart and the stat calculation function will no longer be able to reach this infinite loop. So uh, it should calculate its stats now if we keep the ride running. All right, the ride is now um, calculating stats again. Now, uh, it turned out that uh, this wooden cozy track being here at exactly the same height as the station also caused, caused uh, some issues. So what I actually had to do here was, uh, well, here we have the steel wild mouse station pieces. And here we have the wooden roller coaster track. And I actually had to move the wooden roller coaster track um, above the steel wild mouse track. Um, because if I didn't do that, then the stat calculation function would actually get stuck in the um, wooden weld or the, the wooden coaster track for some reason. Anyway, um, yeah, just uh, keeping the steel belt mouse track here below the wooden coaster track solved the issue. So now the ride actually will always calculate its stats. Um, it is always a good idea to actually keep, uh, to actually move one of these uh, pieces out of the way here. Um, yeah, just to prevent the stat calculation function getting stuck in this upper loop. All right, so I will change this ride back to a lift. And um, now that the ride has its stats calculated, um, yeah, guests should ride it uh, regardless of its uh, stats. So I'm just going to uh, spawn in some guests into the park. Um, actually, before I do that, there's one more thing we should probably do. So for that, I'll just close the ride and wait for it to stop. So it's stopped now, so there are no guests on the ride. I'll go into the ride vehicle editor. And uh, for the swing ride, vehicle one is the one that's underground. Uh, I don't want any guests on the seats that are underground. So for vehicle one, I'll change the number of seats to zero. All right, I'm going to open the ride now and I'll spawn in some guests so we can see the ride in action. All right, you can see the guests uh, entering these uh, vehicles now. I actually forgot to give them a nice color. There we go. So the guests are entering the vehicle now. All seats are taken. And now uh, the guests will swing around this uh, tower. Anyway, um, yeah, like I said, this is just uh, one way to do a swing. Uh, yeah, there's just infinite ways. You can decorate this roof in a nice way. I really like this method with the Enterprise, although it does have uh, the disadvantages that uh, you will often see a message that the ride um, hasn't been fixed yet. Uh, and of course, you'll always keep a, a mechanic busy if you uh, do this. 
Anyway, um, yeah, let me uh, replace these fences here. Oh wait, they're actually uh, there. We go. But yeah, um, like I said, this is just one way you can build a ride like this. The shoe stringing, pretty basic. Uh, it was a little bit uh, weird that the wooden coaster track actually uh, prevented uh, the ride from calculating stats, but that's solved now by switching around the order of the elements. Anyway, um, yeah, I think this ride uh, will look good in any park. So, uh, yeah, if you uh, want to build one of these, uh, you know, now know how to do it. Anyway, um, that was all for this tutorial. Hope it's useful for you. If you like this tutorial, please consider giving it a like. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think of it. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again in the next video. See you later.